I, I don't think most Princeton students know who Witherspoon is. That's a shame. They should, but they probably don't. Uh, and the ones who want to get rid of it are just motivated by chaos, motivated by this subjective left-wing diversity, equity, inclusion, woke view of the world that everything of the past must be torn down unless they were perfect based on the judgment of today. John Weatherspoon is an American hero. He was the only clergy to sign the Declaration of Independence. He was recruited uh, from Europe, from Ireland, to be the president of Princeton. He was a contemporary of James Madison. Uh, he was considered a brilliant mind, a lover of liberty, uh, and and a one of the early ministers to run Princeton. That's what Princeton used to do, is train ministers. Uh, and so he's been revered. There are halls named after him at Princeton. Um, he's recognized as a hero. When I was an undergraduate, I believe it was in 2001, uh, they put up a statue. In fact, we put up a statue and a town in Ireland put up a statue, um, reciprocating statues, recognizing um, what a significant contribution he's made, not just to the university, but to the country. I remember when they put it in. And I remember, I think I was a, I must've been a sophomore or a junior. And I remember thinking, wow, that's pretty cool. We don't put up statues of many founders anymore. Uh, it was there was already you know there's a huge leftist tilt and you know, ivy league at princeton so i was surprised then but very heartened like of course this guy deserves a statue and it should be right there front and center outside of firestone library uh in front of the chapel he's facing the chapel which now doesn't teach much about god but that's uh, another story uh, it was just it was great to see and there was no blowback um there was a small ceremony i believe and then I even wrote about it in the Princeton Tory, which is the conservative publication at Princeton, just saying like, this is, I think I suggested we offer a course in the history of the founders of Princeton or people at Princeton. There's so many interesting people we should learn about them uh, and learn from them. So the idea that his statue would be removed is completely antithetical to history, antithetical to what the university says it stands for and would be bending to a really noisy, tiny percentage of radicals who now try to get their way on any college campus. And the irony is Witherspoon was anti-slavery. He may have had two slaves. A lot of, and almost every rich white person did back then. That's not to rationalize it. That's just to look at reality then. And he worked to free the slaves and hoped and believed that the founding generation would be one of the last to own them. So he was ahead of his time on that and and not perfect nobody is but my goodness it instead of tearing him down getting rid of him we should be celebrating him and teaching about him there's a difference between forgotten and erased forgotten is is it, you know the last time someone's name is spoken or generationally you know their impact is is forgotten erased is this is a significant person and we're going to cancel or erase them so that you never encounter the arguments that they made because they were imperfect people. Well, we're all imperfect uh, in, in one way or another. So eraser is the most dangerous aspect of it because the next generation it isn't even given an opportunity to rediscover. They're just buried. So it, it's happening across the spectrum. It's on us to not let it happen in big and small ways. This seems like a, a layup. This is an easy one uh, if, if Princeton has an ounce of courage. But they're going to sit in these little listening sessions and they're going to listen to these little radical activist undergraduates complain about their super, you know, um, about their horrible privileged lives at Princeton, like a bunch of, you know, babies in diapers uh, who I mean, it's, it's insane what we let them get away with. It takes just a little bit of backbone, a little bit of education, um, standing up to the mob of of young undergraduates who are really um how would i put it they're hyper self-assured and also hyper uneducated so they're very confident in their very shallow beliefs based on talking points and virtue signaling so i i, I don't know where this will go but places like princeton will set the tone places like harvard and yale and others i mean they're all left-wing nonsense vacuums at this point but Princeton's held out with Robbie George and some conservative members, the idea of free thought, giving into something like this signals that you are also retreating completely.